to talk about isometry. Okay, another name for isometries is rigid transformations. If you think about something that is rigid as something that's like not bendy, right? Okay, that um, keeps its shape. So like my hair is not rigid, right? But this table is rigid. So if I spun it around or flipped it upside down or like slid it across the room, that table would still be in the same shape because it's rigid. What? Okay, that's a really good question. I'm not answering it. All right, so over in this column are the rigid transformations we are going to talk about. Um, the first one is called a translation. In Algebra 1, you probably called it a shift. Okay. So in geometry, we are either going to um, translate along a vector. Or a line segment. Okay, um, the vector and the line segment will be in like a certain direction and have a certain length. Okay, so it tells you like which way and how far you're going. All right, the next one is a rotation. You can think of it as a turn. Okay, it's going to be um, about a point. Okay, and it's going to um, be like at a certain angle. So the angle tells you how far to turn around the point. So angle tells how far to turn. So the point tells you where to pivot. And the angle that they give you tells you how much to spin. Next one is a reflection or a flip. We actually did this in algebra also. We reflected in the x-axis. Do you guys remember doing rocks? Okay, when your a value is negative, you would reflect in the x-axis and then everything goes upside down. You guys remember doing that? So your parabolas went from opening up like a cup to down like a frown. Okay, if you had an exponential function, it went from looking like this to being upside down. Linear went from positive slope to negative slope. This is really not doing very well for my hairdo. So we have to reflect in a line. Um, you can say in or you can say over. I've seen it written either way, depending on who's writing the geometry book. Okay, all of those types of transformations are going to preserve the size and the shape of our figures. So they all are going to produce congruent figures. Write that up here. Produce oops, congruent Figures. Um, the symbol for congruent is the equal sign with the tilde over it. Okay, now if it's non rigid, then we can change the shape. Like, well, like Play Doh. Right? Non-rigid. We can change the shape of it and stretch it out. So the example for a non-rigid uh, transformation that we have today is a dilation. So these are ones that enlarge or reduce the original figure. So looking at this figure, what do you see is different? Does the does AC the same size as its image A prime C prime? No. no. So is that length the same? No. Correct. So length change is 
Okay, what do you notice about the angle A compared to angle A prime? It's the same. It's the same. So even though the lengths change, the cool thing about a dilation is that it's going to keep the angles the same. So it preserves angles. Okie dokie. Questions so far? All right, here we go. I don't know that we need to do all of these, um, but these are going to go pretty fast. So looking at the examples that you have up at the top, we are going to state the type of each transformation that has occurred and then say whether or not it is an isometry. So it'll either be a yes or a no. All right, what happened here? Yeah, so this is a translation um, Shift is something we use more in algebra um, Translation is something that we're going to use in geometry. They mean the same thing, but each one is like more specific to that Class does that make sense? Okay, so it's a translation. Is it an isometry if I traced this? and like scooted it over, would it overlap exactly? Yeah. Yes. So it's a yes isometry. All right, what about the next one? Yeah, it's a rotation. You can see that it's pivoting on this point right here. So this is a rotation. Is it an isometry? Yeah. Correct. All right, next one. Correct. You can see the line of reflection right here. Go ahead and draw that in. Is it an isometry? Yeah. Yeah. All right, next one. Dilation. Dilation. You know how your pupils dilate? Yeah. You can think about like it's what happens Is to your that pupils. When you get yeah. Or when you're in love. All right, is that an isometry? No. Okay, it keeps the angles, but the lengths of the sides changed. Okay, last one on this row. It's another translation. Is it an isometry? Yes. Okay, are we getting this? Do we need to do the bottom row, or are we good? No, we're good. Okay, we're good. All right, guys, we're crushing this. Yeah, see, we're going to get to do our homework. Yep, and I'm going to, like, write stuff down. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have to get to do our homework today. The way that this is going, I would say yes. Did I hear a question? Okay. All right, we have to select the diagram where quadrilateral A, B, C, D has been reflected in line N. Okay, think about bending your paper on the line. Where would the figure line up exactly? Okay, so if I'm reflecting, it can't line up like this, right? It's got to, all the points have to line up exactly. It is the last one. Okay, hey, notice that B has to be the same distance away as B prime. You see it? Yeah. Okay, C has to be the same distance away as C prime. Notice that if I connect each point to its image, they are all perpendicular to the line of reflection. Does everybody see that? They're all 90 degrees. Okay, so it's this one. Okay, I don't know who said it was hot in here, but you're right. When we were all sitting in here and not eating for like four hours, it was so cold. So I like warmed it up, right? But now I'm hot. All right, number three, here we go. 
So for this figure, we have um, a little transformation. Um, this is an isometry. We've got two figures. It, this little deal tells us that triangle ABCD maps onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Now, look at the order. The order matters. It's saying specifically that A goes to A prime because that's what's on there first. Okay, the middle one is B, so that goes to B prime because it's in the middle. They're both in the Do you see what I'm saying? No. Okay. Even if I said triangle A, B, C maps to triangle D, E, F, because of it doesn't have any primes on it, right? Because it's in the first position, A would have to go to D. Oh, okay. okay? So even if it doesn't have matching letters with the prime notation, you can tell by the position what has to go to what. Got it? Okay, perfect. So, which are our corresponding angles? Angle A corresponds to what? A, A prime. Okay, I didn't really give us a whole lot of room, did I? I'm going to start out here, guys, sorry. Angle A is congruent to angle A prime. If they're corresponding, they are going to be congruent. All right, angle B is congruent to angle B prime. Okay, you can probably guess the last one. Angle C is congruent to angle C prime. What? Oh, shoot. That is what it's for. I was like, all right, sorry, guys. I was like, oh, why didn't I give you enough space? All right, that was my blonde moment for the day. Like, I don't remember not having room last year. Um, this is something that uh, we took from our stuff because you need to know it, but it wasn't in the stuff that they gave us. All right, corresponding sides. So the sides, do you see that they are segments? Uh, could you go a little further behind those? There's eight on the the corresponding sides are all going to be segments, okay? So let's make sure that we get the order correct. So, segment AB, make sure you put the little line over it, corresponds or is congruent to segment A prime, B prime. Segment BC is congruent to segment B prime, C prime. Segment CA is congruent to segment C prime, A prime. Okay, now looking at our picture, which of these transformations, I want everyone to think about it, don't just yell out an answer, because some of you are gonna see it right away, but I want everybody to have a chance to think. Which of these transformations could be used to prove that um, angle C is congruent to angle C prime? Rotating it about point D, translating it along the line segment, uh, a, A prime, Reflecting triangle ABC over line M or dilating triangle ABC in point B. Okay, go ahead. C. Correct. You guys are really good. So if I were to bend this paper in half and fold it, not in half, but fold it on that line, it would map onto each other. So I know it's a reflection in line M. 
All right, is this transformation isometric? Verify your answer with patty paper. I gave you guys fistfuls of patty paper. Go ahead and grab some. If you need a sheet of patty paper, it's over there. Okay, go ahead and trace it and see if it maps. It's on the back of your chair. All right, we got another one. Okay, we have another transformation. It's saying that um, E, F, G, H maps to E prime, F prime, G prime, H prime. What is the image of point G? So the image is like after the transformation. So this is after, okay, and then G is the pre-image. Write that down. Okay, this is before. So I thought I heard it. G what? G prime. G prime. So it's point. Don't forget to write out the word point. G prime. Okay, what is the pre-image of point H prime? Point H. point H. Don't forget to write the word point. Okay, describe the transformation that could be used to prove that EF is congruent to um, segment E prime, F prime. So, we have two segments that connect. You guys see them? Oops, I did the wrong one. It's F to F prime. Okay. Do you see that if I slide my figure along either of those segments, that it will end up on the image spot? Okay. So I can say translate. E, whoops, segment EF. Hey, can you stop? Along segment, which one do you guys like? Do you want FF prime or E, e prime? FF. Okay, F, F prime or E. E prime. You could do either. I mean, you could do G, G prime or H, H prime, really. Okay, so it says specifically which transformation, what figure we're performing it on, and the line segment that we specify tells us the direction and the length of the slide. Do you guys see all that information in there? Okay, perfect. Next one. Okay, answer the following questions about our transformation depicted below. What is the image of point D? Okay, look very carefully. Use your patty paper if you can't tell by looking at it. You see what's happening? Yeah. It's still a C. It is point P. Okay, what is the pre image? That is the before. What is the pre image of point S? Point N. Okay, what transformation could be used to prove that triangle NID is congruent to triangle SUP? So, I said sup, <laughs> like what's up, you see it, sup. 
Okay, look at it. Which of our rigid transformations is this? It's, it's a rotation. What point does it look like we're rotating around? Oh, good. Okay, look at the angle. What angle is that? An, a right angle, so 90 degrees. So this is rotate. 90 degrees about point. Oops, I forgot. Okay. Guys, after the word rotate, you need to put NID, triangle NID. Sorry. I'm not erasing all that. Just put a little carrot like I did. That's what I'm doing. About point O. Okay, do you guys see that these transformations are very specific? Okay. Can you please put your phone away? All right, last page. We're almost done. Home stretch. Okay, find the value of each variable given that the transformation shown is an isometry. So, what do we know about all of the angles? In, well, not all, but corresponding angles in an isometry. They're rigid. Do they change or stay the same? Okay. So, corresponding, write this down. Up at the top, angles are congruent. What do we know about sides? Corresponding sides are, do they change or not change in an isometry? No, not, change. not change. Corresponding sides are also congruent. So we just have to figure out which ones match up and then set them equal to each other. Everyone got the plan? Okay. So... I have to find I have to find X and Y. You guys see that X is in this expression on the side BC. Okay? Which side is congruent to side BC? Oh. EF. So if these sides are congruent, what do I know about their measures? They are equal. So I can write an equation. So 2x plus 4 has to be equal to 20. Okay, now it's easy. Subtract away the 4. 2x equals 16. Divide both sides by 2. X equals what? 8. 8. So X is 8. Correct. And okay. So 30 is equal to 5 R. Now, which angle corresponds to angle B? Uh, e. Angle E. So I know that 5 Y has to equal 30. So what's Y? All right, divide both sides by 5. Y equals 6. They're pretty good. Okay, now, we just divided both sides by 5, bro. Okay, do you guys see our line of reflection? Okay, so let's look at our stuff here. Let's start with W. Which side corresponds to this side with the W, QN? BC. Look at it. You see how it's like butterfly wings? 
Okay, so I know that two-fifths times W has to equal 20. Okay, how do we undo dividing by 5? Okay, multiply both sides by 5. Now I have 2W equals a hundo. Okay, how do I undo multiplying by 2? Okay, so W equals 50. Okay, next one. Let's look for the stuff with X in it. For X, I see this angle. Which angle corresponds to angle N? Which one? Oh. Angle B, right? Angle B. Okay, I heard someone saying C. Okay. So, I know. Ooh, hold on. Do you guys see that these two angles are marked congruent with the little arcs? Yeah. Okay, so if this one is 95, we also know that this one is 95. Do you guys see that? Okay. Okay, so those two are congruent. We know that 3x plus 35 has to equal 95. 3x plus 35 has to equal 95. So subtract away 35 from both sides. We get 3x equals 60. Divide both sides by 3. I'm getting 20. Okay, next one. Okay, let's look for y. Okay, what angle corresponds to angle C? Q, angle Q. Okay, look, you don't have colors, right? You just have your one pen. So the way that you show that particular angles are congruent to each other is with the number of arcs. You see how these three angles are congruent and they all have one arc? Okay, these two are congruent, but I can't give them one arc because they're not congruent to the other three. So I'm going to give them two arcs. Got it? Okay. <coughs> so. Okay. Um, guys, you need to know something. You guys ready for this? We're going to drop some knowledge on you. Okay, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Okay, so look, we've got a 95 and a 95 and 110. So 360 total minus 110. Oh my gosh. Minus 95 and minus another 95. Our calculators will be back tomorrow. Does someone want to help us out for today? Wait, what happened to our calculator? They're in the ACT. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They'll be back. Oh. What is it? 60? Okay, so if this one is 60, oops, I wrote 6, 60, then this one also has to be 60. So we're going to say 2y equals 60, so what does y have to be? 30. Okay, last one. Can we just add these up? Uh, okay, what is... Z. So this is. Wait a minute. Okay, look, look. Do you see these are the corresponding ones? So one half times Z 
equals 10. Okay, half of z is 10. What does z have to be? No. 20. 20. Good recovery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any questions about those? Yeah. Almost done, we're almost done. I'm waiting. Okay. This is a this is about what we did yesterday. Coach Vogler is trying to copy this angle ABC. What is the next step in her construction? Okay, she already has her um, line that she's copying the angle onto. Okay, it looks like she's already measured from B to C on here. Okay, and then she's made an arc going from X to Y. And done that on here. What does she need to copy next? Okay, so if she does BA, can she, whoops, that was a little bit too good. Can she put A like this if it's the same length? Okay, so what does she, before she makes this line, no, look at where the arc is. Look at where the arc is. X to Y. X to Y. She has to use the com compass to copy the distance from point X to point Y. Okay? So she's taking this. Look. She's taking this, and she has to copy that. Right? I'm like a human compass. Okay? This length has to be equal to this length. Those segments have to be congruent. Does everybody, okay, hey, I'm trying to help you prepare for your test and to like make sure that you understand your homework and you're being really disrespectful. We have it about like every two or four sections, right? I'm sorry, three or four sections. So you can expect a quiz after 2.3 or 2.4. Right? Okay, does everybody understand that these lengths have to be equal? Okay. Then she can go like this and make that segment. Boop, 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 right? Okay. All right, cool. That's it.